On today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, we'll be bringing in Nick Fairbanks for this Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. We'll be discussing that week that was for the Florida Panthers. We'll also be chatting about if there's a possibility of hires remorse for Bill Zito and coach Paul Maurice. And we're going to discuss more of the injuries for the Florida Panthers of who's expected to play on Friday and preview Friday night's game between the Florida Panthers and the New York Islanders all on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, December 23rd edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at MondoMan12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. Don't forget to also follow the other shows on the Locked On AHL Network, including Locked On AHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden, and locked on nhl prospects and don't forget to send in your screenshot of your subscription to the locked on florida panthers youtube channel and your five star rating on whichever podcast app you listen to locked on panthers so to for your chance to win two free tickets to the florida panthers versus vancouver connects game on january 14th at fla live arena so cats fans it's a fairbanks friday edition of the show it's a, it's a non post game recap edition of of Fairbanks Friday, which is something we're not used to. A little bit of a different week, uh, this week for, for for the for this podcast. So let me just bring him in right away, uh, and uh, let me bring in my guest. It's it's Nick Fairbanks. Uh, Nick, welcome back to the show for uh, another Fairbanks Friday, and. You know, a non a non post game recap, which means a, an earlier recording for us too. Much needed, and uh, happy holidays, by the way. Um, I, I know it's been uh, quite a busy few weeks and everything, but uh, you know, I'd be remiss to you know offer season's greetings to you. And um, yeah, just uh, you know, a little weird kind of week uh, going on. You know, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, different things going on the last week that uh, we'll definitely get into this episode. Yeah, even though it hasn't been uh, the most encouraging week for the Panthers, uh, I have a question for you. Have you seen the new Avatar movie? No, I have not. Oh man, I I saw it, I saw it today, and mm-hmm. it was a uh, it was a uh, it was it was great. I that's all I gotta say. No, not gonna give any spoilers uh, as far as as far as the movie, but I I got I got the chance to to see it and highly recommend. I I don't I wouldn't say it's better than the first. Of course, uh, it's the number one box office uh, movie, the first one, but mm-hmm. uh, de- definitely, uh, de- definitely uh, should should give it a try, and I recommend recommend everyone else to do so. But let's talk to some Panthers, man. So, ever since the, the last time we were on, uh, of course we've we've had two games, two of them being against the New Jersey Devils, and I just want to get a wellness check from you because there was a lot that went on, a lot of like you said, ups and downs. So I, I just want to give you the floor a little bit to discuss the the last three games for the Cats. I think frustration is probably the best word to use just because I think with a team like New Jersey who, you know, you, you can definitely see the up and coming rise of that team. I mean, they started off really, you know, terribly uh, to the point where fans were calling for Lindy Ruff's head. You know, I think after game two, um and all of a sudden they started you know ripping off wins here and there and now they're coming back down to earth but uh I think right now what's frustrating is the inconsistency of this Florida Panthers team uh being able to string wins together and then also being able to hold leads and I think right now that's where my frustration level is um and to get to uh what happened in the first New Jersey double game the Alexander Barkov uh situation um, 
I'm kind of with you, uh, and I know that you had voiced your opinion about it, uh, that you don't know if it was intentional by uh, Nico Heischer. I'm kind of with you on that, but at the same time, I can kind of see where uh, fans would see that, yeah, he kind of went in and kind of dropped his stick on Alexander Barkov's knee. Um, you know, I, I've, I play center sometimes when I play hockey, um, you know, here at the ice den, but never at a point where when I lose my balance or I lose control of the face off, am I going after another guy's leg? Um, so that's just my view of it. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be others who uh, accept that view, but at the same time, you know, these guys are professionals. They're trying to win every single face off they can. It's not beer league. So I can kind of see where there might be an accident as well. Um, now the response by the Florida Panthers I liked it coming out of the second period of that first game, just, you know, they were chirping him and kind of going after him and giving him a shoulder and stuff like that. But if they didn't respond to him, you know, in that game, then they needed to respond to him last night. They did not. They waited until the end of the game to respond after the game was already lost. I don't agree with that. You need to do that stuff in game. You need to take care of your business in game. And you had a chance to win that game. And unfortunately they let it slip away. And I think that's what ultimately led to the frustration at the end of the game, why they went after him. But I'm sorry if, if a player like him, who is an up and coming two way center takes out your top star, where is the retribution? Where is the team sticking up for Alexander Barkov right now? Why are they not sticking up for him? Or why are they not trying to send a message? And I think right now with the way that this team is this season, I, I don't see any fight in this team. I, I feel like they're going through the motions. I don't feel like that they're listening to coaching right now, like as of this moment right now. And that really kind of begs the question of, are we going to have these same issues going on for the rest of the season? And are we going to have buyer's remorse with Paul Maurice? Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And you, you think about the different ways that the Florida Panthers are trying to respond to adver adversity. I mean, look what happened against the Seattle Kraken just a few weeks ago um, when Paul Maurice called that rare second period timeout, didn't work that game, but then the Florida Panthers, go on to win four nothing against the Columbus Blue Jackets. We talk about all the blown uh leads that the Florida Panthers have had not being able to create separation. I mean, one game that just popped into my head right now was even the San Jose Sharks game that they won in a shootout, even one in a winning effort where they had two a two goal lead in the third period and just by the skin of their teeth they were able to to get a shootout win which that was even though Sam Reinhart hadn't scored a goal at that time, that was a confidence boost for him and then and then really the the way the panthers responded last saturday it mid game versus responding after the game it's just like it's kind of like unwritten rules for in in the game of hockey of like when to do it and when to not do it i mm -hmm. i i always knew i always knew that coming into this game that there was going to be some type of animosity towards nico heizer and their next matchup isn't until march against new jersey devils but now even 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 after the empty net goal, pe pe um, the New Jersey Devils have Matthew Kachuk on notice, whether we we want to admit it or or, or not. They, they he he's on notice, unfortunately, and there it's it's kind of like reminds me of the whole uh, Tom Wilson situation with the New York Rangers as well uh, of what happened after. I mean, also that with we also got to remember that that was a, the fifty six game season in the NHL, so that that was when mm -hmm. they were having like back to back games against the same team but it's just so it's just so strange how the schedule aligned this time around when it came to like it being so fresh in in our minds it is and it makes you wonder if there's kind of like a rivalry brewing because uh, I see a lot of the devils um this season and what the panthers were doing last season you know scoring in transition off of the turnovers I mean that game tying goal early in the third period yesterday was basically off of a turnover in the neutral zone. And Jesper Pratt just put it below the glove of Sergei Bobrovsky. Uh, in my opinion, an unexcused goal given up. Uh, he had looked good the whole game and he gives up a soft one like that. And I think that's what deflated the team and deflated him ultimately. But uh, that's Matthew to Chuck. 
you know, to get on at that point is he's going to be your agitator. He's got the skill, he's got the will and everything like that, but he's there to mix it up too and get in under people's skin. And, you know, maybe he's not the guy that should be going after Nico Heischer. Why is Ryan Lomberg not going after him? Why is somebody else not stepping up? You know, like last year, anybody would be going after anybody. This whole team would stick up for each other. Now, uh, I don't know. We, we got to play smart. We got to play defensive. We got to play playoff hockey. Well, I'm telling you right now, the playoff hockey is not working. Um, mm-hmm. You can't sit on leads. This isn't the playoffs right now. You need points to get in, and the Panthers are not, and it's Christmas time, and they're sitting outside of a playoff spot. It's just frustrating because, to me, in my mindset, you have to attack, and you have to have puck possession, and you need to score on your chances in order to win. You can't go into a defensive shell and just expect – you know, to win that way. Cause now you're giving the other team all the chances that they could get, or you're giving them a chance to even tie the game. And what we're seeing right now is exactly that. And the other teams are, you know, making the Panthers pay for it. Mm-hmm. And you also wonder if Brad Gugus had been able to play in last night's game, if he would be one of the ones to go after uh, Nico Heizer as well. So just thinking a little bit about that, of, uh, of why is it Kachuk? And of course the timing of it too, which is, which is which has gone into question, uh, of course. But um, Jeff Merrick also mentioned how how he he how Matthew Kachuk has had issues with other players, and one of one notable one being Drew Doughty in in the in the past when he was in the Pacific Division. So that that so it looks like now with him being in the Eastern Conference, that's uh that's uh he's the new the new guy that he's gonna like have uh. I guess issues with so like once again th- th- they won't be seeing each other until 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 March so we won't have to worry about that until then but we're going to transition over to segment number two where we're going to be discussing something that Nick uh spoke spoke about with uh coaching and also and also something that we we kind of have to pose a question to about the coaching and but first we're we're going to give you a message from the NHTSA. And did you know that driving under the influence of marijuana is illegal? That's right. Driving high could get you a DUI. If you're wondering if law enforcement can tell if you're driving high, well, everybody else in your life can. Your friends can tell, coworkers, even your parents can tell. What makes you think law enforcement can't tell? Well, they can. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Second segment here on this Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Rhonda Velez, I got Nick Fairbanks here on the show. And Nick, uh, we discussed just over text message of what the topics were going to be. And you you posed the question really, really early on on the show. And I, I, I think I, I think that was a, a great teaser. So I'm thankful that you got you uh, put that in there. So let's just pose the question because. I've uh, I've defended Paul Maurice uh, here and there, but there there have been times where where you, you it comes into question ab- about about Paul Maurice's uh, system and of course playoff hockey, uh, and of course you speaking earlier about they're not in a playoff spot right now, and let's pose the question: Is there hires remorse for the Florida Panthers bringing in Paul Maurice? So I want to start off uh, this segment with just an overall broad, you know, understanding of what exactly is going on with the Florida Panthers this season. And um, just to kind of give an idea of like where I'm at. Number one, this team hasn't been healthy since maybe game one of this season. Um, Maybe not even game one because we're missing Anthony Duclair. Not that I think he's going to fit into this defensive system because he's purely an offensive weapon that stretches out, um, you know, the offense and the defense on the other side. But um, you know, this team hasn't been able to, you know, be healthy, create, um, you know, and I keep saying the word synergy, but what I mean is um, they haven't been able to gel together. Um, lines have been mixed up. Uh, guys are playing with people who they're not really used to playing with, and it's just very hard to play that way. Um, secondly, goaltending has been mediocre at best. Um, you know, you can't win a lot of games when goaltenders are not stopping the puck. But Brofsky's been the main point of that, unfortunately. He hasn't had the season that he had last season, which really did help uh, that this team, you know, come back uh, with a lot of their, um, you know, four goals and being down. Um, that made it exciting. Uh, Spencer Knight's been hurt and sick, and he hasn't been consistent. 
And then on top of that, you have the Keith Yandel contract that is really hurting this team right now. So, um, you know, you're not able to make the moves you want to make. You're not able to make the trades that you think you would like to make. So it really makes you wonder, number one, is it the coaching really? Yeah. Or is it these this three-pronged attack that's really hurting this team right now? And maybe this is as good as they're going to be. And maybe this is the, you know, where we need to understand and what the season is going to be. Unfortunately, it's not good enough and it's not what we expect because of what happened last season. But it's a presence winning trophy team. They were supposed to be vying for a top playoff spot, if not to go to the second round to the Eastern Conference Finals, hopefully. And you just don't see a team right now where that's happening. Now, to go to the coaching side, the coach is there to motivate players to put a system in place and to make sure that you know, they're playing the right way and that they're conducting themselves on the ice as they should be. Um, I have a problem with Paul Maurice in this way. I don't see them adjusting. I don't see the team adjusting game in and game out. Uh, timeouts, as you equated to last segment, are uh, kind of weird timed uh, and not being really all that effective. And, you know, I just don't feel that the team is really bought in. I mean, they're. I feel like they're playing the system, but they're not getting the results um you know we can talk about you know and, and Paul Maurice even talks about them the analytics the expected goals for you know they're, they're one of the top teams for it well expected goals don't lead to W's they don't lead to wins at all um I could care less if the team is in the top three of expected goals or high danger chances it doesn't matter if the puck's not in the back of the net and unfortunately it's happening in the Florida Panthers net a lot more than it's happening in the opponent's net. So um, I just think there's a lot to go around right now. And as of probably this last New Jersey game, with all that in consideration, I am starting to have hires remorse with Paul Maurice, just because I don't see any changes happening. And I, I just, I feel like that there needs to be more done with this team right now to get them to where they need to be. Yeah, and, and that was and that was the conversation of Paul Maurice even when he was in Winnipeg about just riding his top line guys not not being not splitting uh star players and putting and putting too much star power on one line as well that w- that was just a topic of conversation for for Paul Maurice even going even going back to the even going back to those days as as well but you 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 wonder you kind of you kind of start to wonder what and this this is a this is a question that we we spoke about yesterday with uh with Alex Slump of Full Press NHL about what the floor is uh for for the Panthers but also we got to we got to dis- we got to discuss what their ceiling is uh for for, mm-hmm. for this team as well and listen at this point they're not going to finish in the top 3 i am i am not going to i'm not i i don't think i i think that they could go on some type of run but not the type of run that's going to get them in past a Toronto, a Tampa Bay, and they haven't even faced Toronto yet this this season. The, yeah, they already got three games under their belt against Boston. They haven't faced Montreal yet, so there's some four point swings there. So it's just, but when you get to those games and you don't take advantage, then then what's the conversation going to be? We we keep talking about this run that 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 we hope to happen. But then what's going to happen if if it doesn't? Neither. We got to also mentally prepare for that as well. The thing about this team, and, you know, I know Jacob Winans, you've had him on the show multiple times. Uh, I'm not sure if he's mentioned it here, but it seems like this is in the middle of the Bob Bogner years where this team is just going through the motions. They're trying to find their identity and they're trying to figure out how to win games or close out games only to have a huge rush at the end of the season and miss the playoffs by one point. Ugh. This team, sh- this team should not have to go on a run like that in order to make the playoffs. If anything, they don't deserve to, if they need to go on a run like that at the end of the season, you need to be consistent. Now you need to be consistent in the first quarter of the season, because that's really what separates between you and the playoff teams. And Florida has not been able to do that. So outside of what I just kind of like went over, um, Paul Maurice hasn't been able to do that. He hasn't been able to get this team to be, uh, you know, at all, um, you know, in a way that gets them, you know, into a playoff spot right now. And personally, I I don't care that they haven't played Montreal yet, because to me, 
that's a 50 50 game right now with the way this team's playing they could win that game they could lose it uh mm-hmm. toronto they play they play good teams really well outside of boston mm-hmm. and probably tampa but i'll talk about tampa a little bit later and what i think needs to be done with them but it just to me the lower tier teams need to be not overlooked and they need to come in with a game plan of taking care of business mm-hmm. does does uh, we i mentioned the san jose game earlier even though that resulted in in a win i mean just sh- chicago have. Sh- chicago philly coyotes coyotes blue jackets columbus the, fir- the yeah. first time all, all of that so you just you, you don't take advantage that of that and then of course the the blown leads against st louis and edmonton those are the the ones that just hurt con- consistently as far as mm-hmm. and and dropping points it's going to catch up to you and it, it already has and we're in we're going to be in uh game number uh 34 35. uh to, to 35 uh, on on yep. friday so it, it's it we're over we're over we're over the two we're over the one third mark of the season. So we have, a, we have a, we kind of know of who this Panthers team is. Is it gonna, are, are we gonna still see this? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how much of a change there is going to be. And of course, with the, with what you mentioned about the cap issues earlier, I don't know what kind of move they can be made with the l- lack of wiggle room. And if they're far out of a playoff spot, you might have to consider selling and just, that's something that we didn't consider. We didn't even even think about coming into the season. We thought they were the, that they were going to be right in the playoff race, and then you're thinking, hmm, they might have to recoup some assets from what they already sold from last year's trade deadline. So, yeah. Yep. And th- this team should. The reason why we think that is not only were we coming off the high of last season, but also this team should be better. They mm-hmm. it should be there. They have no excuses. I mean, you can't use injuries as, as excuses. There's been other seasons where Barco's been out, Ekblad's been out, and yet they've been fine. Or at least they, they treaded water until they came back. What's the excuse this year? Mm-hmm. What, we, we can't score goals or Bob's not making the saves? Okay, how's that different from any other season recently? And yet they were still able to overcome it. So what is the issue right now? That's mm-hmm. what they need to answer, and that's what we need to figure out. Yep. That and. I'm 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 sure I'm sure the players are trying to I'm sure the the coaching staff is, is trying to as well so it's just they they got they got one more game before the holiday break and then and then with Alexander Barkov and Radko Gudis coming back next week yeah we could yeah. say these guys are coming back but even sometimes with them being on the ice the 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 they're still racking up some losses too so Try not to get that expectation a little too high as well mm-hmm. when they do. So we we, we just gotta just um, lower lower them a little bit as, as we come out of uh, as we come out of the break. But in segment number three, we're gonna discuss uh, more uh, m- more of updates with injuries, and we're also going to preview Friday's game between the Florida Panthers and the New York Islanders. We're gonna discuss this next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Got Nick Fairbanks here on this Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. And a few uh, updates as well. Like I said in the previous segment, Brad Gugudis and Alexander Barkov are not going to uh, play with the for the Florida Panthers as they travel to Long Island to face against the New York Islanders at UBS Arena uh, Friday night, 7.30 p.m. But also... Uh, we also discussed the they there was Palmer's was also asked about the status of Anthony Duclair and Patrick Hornquist. So Palmer spoke about how it's unlikely that Patrick Hornquist is going to be el- is going to be able to be activated off LTIR when his first day of eligibility will be. And Anthony Duclair 
still a few weeks away. We're we're gonna we're likely gonna see now February because it's gonna be like six weeks that he's gonna be skating in a team setting. So looking around closer to the to not at, exactly at the trade deadline, but towards the trade deadline when An- Anthony Duclair is going to be game ready. So just look at the situation with Hornquist and just of course the salary cap in um topics that we've been talking about really throughout the offseason, even throughout this season. Uh, part of me sees it as he's had a handful of, con- almost a handful of concussions, but there's also the, the thinking of this front office has plan A, B, C, D, but also Patrick Hornquist was on the ice a few weeks ago and players want mm-hmm. to play. What do you make of this? Uh, two things. Number one, um, whether players want to play or not, um, they know their bodies and everything. But at the same time, I think a lot of things about uh, concussions we still don't know about. It's still something that is being heavily debated, heavily studied. Uh, I'm not going to speak on how the NHL treats it or you know any other league, but um, I, I think what the Panthers are doing is what's best for the team right now. I think with the cap relief that uh, it provides, it allows them to get more players on the roster. It allows them to fill out a full roster. And on top of that, I'm not really surprised, to be honest with you. It's been every single season where he's missed at least a week or two or a couple weeks or even a month. Um, I remember if it wasn't like two seasons ago where he mysteriously disappeared for like two months and then came back for a playoff run. But it just it just sucks because he's such a gamer and he's such an influence on the bench that they have to lose that. But at the same time, his absence is also a positive for this team, um, you know, in management uh, terms. Uh, And then you have Anthony Duclair that, you know, was rumored to be back by Christmas. Well, here we are. And uh, unfortunately he's not game ready yet. So I think they're just trying to be cautious with him and not rush him back uh, because there's no need to. And also there's really no cap room. So, I mean, that, kind of, you know, takes that out of the equation. Um, Racco Gudis, um, to me, it doesn't make sense to bring him back for one game. Alexander Barkov, even if he's ready to play, um, I'd err on the caution with him. It's just one game, you know, until Christmas, until the break. doesn't um, make sense to bring him back. Um, just let the team in front of uh, that they're going to put out there right now try to fight for a win. Um, they had one yesterday. They just dropped it. So um, I, I think right now, you know, to kind of get back to your question. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there. Um, This is management basically saying, listen, we know you're hurt. You've had a couple of these. Let's slow it down. Let's make sure that you're going to be okay. And then on top of that, you know, it provides us with some flexibility. So, and we promised you we weren't going to trade you. We're not going to, but we're still going to, you know, kind of hold you out of the lineup so that we can be more flexible. Mm -hmm. And even with the cap relief, uh, just something that just popped into my head is like, there, there was a time where they had to have uh, 11 forwards even then because Chris Tierney and Colin White got hurt in the same game uh, a, a few weeks ago. I believe that was the Columbus game, if I'm not mistaken. It's, yeah, it's and they won that one, yep. And, and they won that one, too, with, without them. So just uh, – and and going down to uh, 10 forwards in the same game. I mean, thankfully, Colin White is back. I mean, I, the practice lines had him at center, on fourth line center, going back to center. So just goes to show that even with that cap <laughs> relief, it's just like – the consistent juggling up and down the lack of chemistry between these teams of uh, these lines as well. It's just, uh, it's just consistent juggling as well. And just, uh, just makes for a very, very bad situation for the Panthers, at least right now. I mean, only, only, but only so much we can say about cap room, but it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's there and, and, and we're, and we're definitely feel, feeling it uh, this season, but even, but just, you, you, we got to think about like when, if, if one of those guys, Duke or Hornquist get activated, you're not going to have a full 23. And what if those same issues come about again and again and again? That's kind of what I think management knew about going into this season. Um, they knew Duke wasn't going to be here. I think they probably hedged their bets that Hornquist wasn't going to be healthy the whole season. Um, hate to say it, but Ekblad hasn't been the healthiest for the last couple of years either. So I think that that's unfortunately from a management perspective, that kind of went into their planning and they knew that they were going to have a little bit of wiggle room, but it wasn't going to be much. So unfortunately, um, you know, 
due to players health, you know, they were able to, you know, find a way to call some players up. But uh, other than that, you know, that's, that's where they're at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's, it's something that they're just going to continue to, to struggle with uh, all season and w whether those guys are activated or not. But l before we sign off here, um, there, there is a game tonight that for for the Florida Panthers uh, between them and, and the New York Islanders. And, uh, and right now the Island we're, we're recording this, it is eight Oh seven PM right now. Uh, the New York Islanders and the, and the New York Rangers, they're, uh, they're tied up at one uh, with 18 minutes left in the second period. The, the, We've spoken about what the issues have been for the New York Islanders uh, really for the last few years, even in their conference final appearances in the against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Defensive-oriented team uh, the, the, doesn't really score a lot uh, offensively. I mean, Brock Nelson and uh, and Matthew Barzell are the main uh, scorers, even though even though at one point Matthew Barzell had 18 assists and no goals, but net, right now he's gotten four goals under his belt, but 27 assists got paid this off season. And even, and these two teams are two teams that defensemen, as far as offensive categories of top five and in, in goals shots on goal. And, and of course the, the defensemen there are jumping more into the rush uh, for, for, for both teams, but they've already beaten them twice this year we the of course one of them was opening night we spoke a lot and actually one of them was a Fairbanks Friday edition the post game show <laughs> we spoke about how that was a playoff grind it out type of win I, I mean it was it was mm -hmm. but but I think this is a really good matchup for for the Panthers due to some of the offensive struggles for for the Islanders and of course they faced off twice in that in in like a two-week span they won three two at home as well got out to a two two nothing lead too um as well so uh the islanders even though the panthers haven't gone out to too many two goal leads this season this team specifically on long island you get a two goal lead against them you're in good shape 100 percent, and it's kind of uncanny how similar these teams are uh when it comes to looking at you know um, how they're faring this season. I will say the Islanders look better uh, because they have three more wins under their belt. Mm -hmm. However, you can definitely say that their goaltending is probably what has gotten them those three extra wins. Um, you know, I, I, Sorokin is definitely a Vesna candidate this year. Um, you know, as you alluded to, their defensemen are jumping up into the play and scoring. Uh, them and the Panthers are in the top echelon of the league for that. But Again, you need to be able to score goals at the end of the day to win. Um, Florida, to me, has more skill. Uh, I think that they have a better overall team, which is why that I think that tomorrow could be a very advantageous game for them. And um, <laughs> I think that, you know, Florida knows how to play them now. And, you know, if the Islanders do pull up a win tonight, you know, against the Rangers, uh, which they just went up 2-1, uh, I think they're going to gas themselves tonight and Florida will be able to take advantage. Mm -hmm. And, and let's not forget that Lane Lambert was part of the coaching staff that Barry Trotz has as, as, uh, as, as uh, Nick Fairbanks was trying to keep his composure as my cat jumped on my desk. If you're watching this on YouTube, you could see my, my cat <laughs> right here. So just trying to uh, keep her a little still. So she's not uh, in, in knocking the, the mic, the mic down from, for me, but uh uh, but yeah, it, it's just a, it's just a matter of it's just a matter of just trying to get to Ilya Sorokin and Simeon Varlamov is hurt, so yep. he, he Sorokin is going to be on that set on both ends of back to back. Sorokin has three shutouts this season, and he's been in the conver he he was a pre in in the preseason conversation for the Vesna. Regardless of what go what's going on in Russia for and everything that's going on politically, if there's an Olympic, mm -hmm. if there's if there's if there's an Olympic tournament and Russia's in it, my goodness, the the amount the goaltenders that could qualify, two of them, two of them are in the same are within miles of each other, and of course Andre Vasilevsky it, it, mm -hmm. in, for for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So just the 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 amount the amount of the amount of great goaltenders that come, and of course the Florida Panthers have a two time Vezina the Trophy candidate in Sergey Bobrovsky as well. Not not to that form anymore, but. 
but the the performance that Sorokin had and he's kept them in games last season and it, it's a uh, it's just really about trying to trying to just consistently get up in front a, against Sorokin and and he's going to he's going to be tired and and thankfully just like next week's game against the Montreal Canadiens next Thursday second end of a back to back so but the the travel for New York is going to be is a factor which is a lot easier when you're coming from Madison Square Garden back to UBS Arena versus how the Panthers traveled too for their back to back. So it's it's not it, I don't think it's that much of an emphasis the fact that their back to back is just right there. Yeah, um I also want to kind of contact uh, whoever's in the organization decided to have them come home for one home game against the Devils and then the next day fly out to New York to have a game just before Christmas. I don't know if they were trying to fit in another game or if nobody wanted to come down here. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to come down to South Florida during this time. The weather's amazing and it's about to get even better. I mean, kidding me, it's going to be as cold as it has been in the last 30 years, Mm -hmm. supposedly. So it's actually going to feel like Christmas around here, which I love. But um, yeah, it just it's just it's a, a weird scheduling uh, <laughs> snafu that they had, but um, we'll see how Florida responds tomorrow. Um, you know, you said to temper expectations. I expect them to win tomorrow. Um, all the indications mm-hmm. they have everything in their power to win tomorrow. Now, I say that they could drop it too. Yeah, very well can. So so. Yeah, I'll leave it at that, hoping that they win. And uh, hopefully uh, by next Thursday when we're talking again, we can kind of recap that and then uh, go. When it comes to just walking into the rink and just expecting it every single time. So it's just a little a little different this time around. But Nick, I want to thank you so much once again for uh, coming on this Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. Not not an easy time to be talking about these uh, cats, and but at, at least you get to see a beautiful one right right here. So at, yeah, at least you get to. But uh, <laughs> tell everybody where they can follow you and you online. Uh, thank you very much for having me on again, Armando. I look forward to uh, being on next week. Um, happy holidays to you and your family. Uh, everybody can follow me on Twitter at Prudentia Zero, and I kind of want you to help me out with something because you said something in your intro, uh, you know, about lockdown. How do people win tickets to that Vancouver Canucks game again? They send their screenshot of their subscription to Locked On Panthers on YouTube and their five star rating to at LO underscore FLA Panthers via DM or email at locked on FLA Panthers at gmail.com. If I am not disqualified, I might actually do that because Vancouver is my second favorite team. That's the team I grew up with. So If you guys want to beat me and you're listening to this, drop that screenshot and that five-star rating. Let's go. (laughs) Yep. Uh, If that isn't your motivation, then I don't know what is, uh, guys. So (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much, Nick, and I will talk to you next week, my friend. See you next Thursday. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Make sure to subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, and Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked On Sports Today. Peter Bukowski gives you a update on the entirety of the sports scene in 20 minutes or less with all the local and national experts. You could subscribe on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. So I'm Armando Velez with Nick Fairbanks. And you've been listening to Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're your team every day. <laughs>